Hello and welcome to NPTEL MOOC on Applied Electromagnetics for Engineers. In this module, we will continue the discussion of long wave antenna and then consider what is called as freeze transmission equation. To begin with, I hope you remember what we studied about the long wave antenna in the previous module on the previous lecture. So, this was a center fed dipole or a center fed long wave antenna. What we mean by long wave is that the current distribution cannot be assumed to be uniform and the length of the antenna cannot be neglected. Okay. So, we had in the previous module given you specific equations when the length of the long wave antenna was about lambda by 2 and where we had motivated the current distribution based on the physical arguments that you know you can think of a long wave antenna as something that is actually coming from uh, opened up a transmission line where the feeding source was located via a transmission line onto this one. right? So, this is what we had actually assumed, but in general if the length of the antenna happens to be some d in which we will split that length into d by 2 and d by 2 and please note that this gap that we have provided is actually very very small compared to the overall length of the antenna. We still assume the same current distribution that is that of a cosine uh, type of a current distribution that is the current going to the value of 0 at the ends and reaching a maximum at the gap region or at the middle of the antenna and we are only considering the far field antennas as before. Okay. So, you can show that this particular at a far field point you will have only the A z component and this A z component the vector potential component will be independent of the azimuthal angle phi. So, this azimuthal symmetry continues to exist we had written down an expression for A z after substituting the expression for the current distribution. Once you know what is A z, then you can use the previous method to actually find out. First, you have to find out the scalar potential phi, which of course, will be related to the divergence of A and from there you can find out the electric field. Electric field is related of course, to the scalar potential phi as well as to the d by dt of A z. In the case of phasor, d by dt will be replaced by j omega. So, E z will turn out to be having an E theta component because remember we are only considering the far fields and even in the far fields we are working with the spherical coordinate system. We are not working with the Cartesian coordinate system. So, in the spherical coordinate system z component will have a theta and a, and a phi or an r and the r component drops off because we are not interested in that one. The theta component which is required for radiation can actually be given after a few simplifying steps which I asked you to perform in the previous class or pre previous module, this would be given by j eta 0 i 0 which would be the current, then you have 2 pi r sin k 0 d where d is the length of the antenna. Of course, this is just in the denominator changing up the parameter and you of course, know that you are not going to consider the scenarios where this d and k 0 will be such that it would be sin of pi by sorry sin of pi or something right. So, in that case the expression will be slightly different because you want to avoid divisions by 0. Okay. So, luckily for our case we do not really need to bother about that, but in the numerator you have of course, e power minus j k 0 times r which is the phase factor which is associated with the far field through the length. So, if you take the middle of the point as the origin of the coordinate system and keep the antenna out there, the distance from that middle or the origin of the coordinate system to the far field point P will be given by R and it creates a certain phase difference. right? So, I hope you also remember that how did we obtain the current distribution at a particular point and then we said that you know you can actually uh, well the distance from the source distribution to the point P is R and then how you can use the law of cosines to actually represent r and small r. So, this was something that we had already done in the previous class and without going back into all that and uh, if you substitute for the current expression which was a you know, cosine k z kind of an expression out there because I am of course, assuming this feed point as z equal to 0 coordinate system. Okay. So, your electric field E theta was given by j and please remember this is a phasor, this is given by cos k 0 d cos theta, theta being the angle between the observation vector and the axis which is the z axis that we have considered for the antenna to be lined up. Okay. So, this would be cos theta 
minus cos k 0 d divided by sin theta. Okay. So, in the dipole in the or in the elementary dipole kind of a scenario or in the elementary dipole case, you could see that the numerator was actually just 1 and the denominator carried or rather the numerator was actually sin theta and the denominator was essentially 1. But in this case, it is a little bit complicated function of theta and d as well as the operating wavelength lambda okay, because k 0 of course, is related to the free space wavelength lambda by this particular formula. Okay. Now, this is the expression for the electric field. It turns out that you do not really calculate the magnetic field. You could of course, but you do not really calculate the magnetic field because this antenna is kept in the free space which means this would also be equal to eta 0 h phi. So, whatever this term that would not be included that should of course, be the magnetic phasor component h phi. Okay. Sometimes in the textbooks you will also see this factor eta 0 by 2 pi being represented as 60 and there is a reason why it is so because eta 0 is approximately 120 pi okay, and then divide this one by 2 pi the result will be 60. Okay. So, therefore, you will see sometimes that this is written as j 60 i naught e power minus j k 0 r. Sometimes you do not see this sin k 0 d term also it is all right. There are slightly different ways of writing the same expression when they remove this k 0 d then they are assuming that this is actually a half wave antenna. Okay. If not you will have to have this additional factor sitting up here. Okay. Let us anyway go back and find out what would be the field pattern and what would be the power pattern that would look like for this particular antenna for different conditions. Okay. So, let us first consider the simplest case where k 0 d happens to be equal to pi by 2. What does this mean? This actually means that d is given by lambda by 2. Okay. So, k 0 is of course, 2 pi by lambda. So, therefore, 2 pi by lambda into lambda by the length of the antenna that I have taken is not d by 2, but rather d in writing this expression. So, this length of the antenna is actually 2 d. Okay. So, this is the length of the antenna 2 d and therefore, what we have is 2 d being lambda by 2 and d being lambda by 4. So, that was you know this portion is lambda by 4 and this other upper portion is also lambda by 4. The total length of the antenna is lambda by 2, but we have considered in this expression we have written uh, the expression assuming that the length of the antenna is 2 times d. Okay. So, for a half wave antenna the length of the antenna 2 d will be equal to lambda by 2. And clearly, when this happens, what will happen to this k 0 d cos theta term? Well, k 0 d cos theta term will become or we will just write down the entire theta dependent term over here. Let me call this entire theta dependent term as sum f of theta. Okay. So, for f of theta will then become, right? so f of theta and we are of course, considering the case of lambda by 2 antenna. Therefore, I will just put a subscript on to that telling you that this is the length of the antenna. So, f lambda by 2 of theta will be equal to cos of 2 pi by lambda, lambda by 4 that is why you actually got pi by 2 here cos theta there is nothing you do about that and then cos of pi by 2 divided by sin theta. Luckily for us this term actually vanishes. So, that can be removed because cos pi by 2 is actually 0. So, f for a half wave dipole. So, this is called as the half wave antenna or half wave dipole one of the most popular type of an antenna. So, this f lambda by 2 of theta is actually given by cos pi by 2 cos theta divided by sin theta. If I want to sketch this f lambda by 2 of theta, I have to observe that at theta equal to 0 the numerator goes to 0, the denominator also goes to 0. So, you have a 0 by 0 form which of course, you know by using the L'Hopital's rule that you can actually change this into finite value. So, you can differentiate the numerator with respect to theta, differentiate the denominator with respect to theta and then substitute theta equal to 0 or take the limit of theta equal to 0 and you will actually see that this would be equal to 0. So, at, uh, sorry this would be equal to maximum value. Okay. So, this would actually turn out to be maximum. So, let us write down that. So, at theta equal to 0 you have a maximum value. You can show this by you know taking the limit and applying the L hospital's rule and when you have theta equal to pi by 2 cos of theta will be 0. So, that this would be cos of 0 and then this would be sin of 0. So, for theta equal to 0 this would actually be 0 
and for theta equal to pi by 2 this would be maximum ok. So, this would be equal to 0 or minima or the null here ok for theta equal to 0 and for theta equal to pi by 2 you have a maximum value. So, where will theta equal to pi by 2 be? Theta equal to pi by 2 will actually be at this point right. So, this would be the plane that would correspond to theta equal to pi by 2 or that plane is nothing but x y plane. So, if you have an antenna in this fashion, so you can imagine that this is the antenna theta equal to 0 will be along the z equal to 0 axis and then theta equal to pi by 2 will be along the pi by 2 axis ok. So, theta equal to 0 corresponds to along the z axis and the polar angle actually varies for positive values of theta in this way and for negative values of theta in this way of course, you are only most of the time interested in the magnitude and theta equal to pi by 2 corresponds to the plane horizontal plane which will of course, be the x and y plane for us. So, x y plane. So, we are interested in looking at the variation of this f of theta as a function of theta and you can see that the maximum actually occurs along the horizontal plane ok and you can actually sketch this. So, let me just give you a brief sketch the proper sketch should actually come from a simple MATLAB programming or an excel programming. So, this is where our antenna was originally located. So, let me just write down like that and increasing theta angle would be along this way. So, this is for theta this is actually theta equal to pi by 2 or 90 degrees this is for angle theta equal to 0 ok. And when you look at what is the corresponding uh, pattern you would see that this is the pattern that you would see ok. So, I cannot sketch a three dimensional pattern for you. So, what I would try is to you know kind of give you an idea of what is the pattern. So, this is how the pattern that was actually looking like and if you actually take a section or cut away this is how the antenna pattern would look and if I now consider a far field pattern right. So, I am actually looking at a particular point over here which was our far field pattern and on that far field pattern you had a nice uh, spherical front. So, you can imagine that there is actually a big spear which is enclosing this one and wherever this particular point cuts such that the length of this one. So, this is the maximum value and if this max if this value at which you are considering this particular line that you have considered the line r if this value turns out to be 0 0.707 times max or max by root 2 that would define or the cone here would define what is called as the half power beam width of the antenna. So, half power beam width is one where the field actually falls off to 1 by root 2 whereas, the power at those two points would actually have fallen off by half and you can actually obtain by drawing these lines from the antenna feed point and then extending it to the far field region and then measuring uh, what is the actual point of intersection between this line segment and the point ok. You can imagine that this or rather you do not have to imagine if you actually uh, do the 3D plot for this which again as I said I am not doing uh, instead of looking at I mean if you actually take a cut at any this one that you want ok you will see that this would actually be independent of phi that is no matter around the antenna you go the cuts would actually be completely independent of phi. For example, this is a different value of pi which I have taken. So, this would again look like this. So, you can see that this angle is slightly different than the previous phi angle, but then the pattern is actually kind of independent in this particular cut. What would be the corresponding current distribution? Please note that this is the z direction. The current distribution for this one would be a nice half cycle cosine wave. Okay. So, this would be the current distribution for the case where the length of the antenna okay, length of the antenna was equal to lambda by 2. So, this entire thing what we have written corresponds to half wave antenna or half wave dipole antenna. Let us take a different uh, case. Okay. In this case let us consider k 0 d to be equal to pi. So, clearly I have actually increased the length of the antenna out here. Let me uh, for this particular case first you can see that what would happen to k 0 d that is cos k 0 d cos theta minus cos of k 0 d divided by sin theta. So, clearly in this particular case k 0 into d will be equal to pi. So, you will have cos k 0 d will be equal to minus 1 then there this would be cos of pi cos theta plus 1 divided by sin theta actually write down the complete thing, but I will leave this one to you to find out what would be the current distribution 
and it turns out that the current distribution is actually consisting of two half cycles of cosine. Okay. So, in this case the current is minimum along the feed point whereas, of course, it goes to 0 at both the end points as well, but it reaches its maximum at some other point. Okay. So, at half way between this one half of the length of this one. So, what would happen to the corresponding f of theta pattern? So, the f of theta pattern again going back to this being the antenna, the f of theta pattern shows that the beam pattern actually is slightly increased in the directivity. So, it would be a donut kind of a thing, but it would actually be increased directivity for this one. Okay. Now, if you consider the last case where k 0 d was equal to 3 pi by 2, which means that I am actually gone ahead and added one more half cycle, the current distribution for this case would actually look something like this. So, it would actually be 3 half cycles. Okay. So, the current reverses its phase also in this particular uh, feed point and when you sketch, I will leave this as an exercise in MATLAB for you to do so. The sketch for this one is very interesting. You will actually see that the antenna does not really radiate at theta equal to 90 degrees. Okay. This was of course, theta equal to 0 which is the axis of the dipole okay. and this was actually the plane that is perpendicular to the axis of the dipole. Okay. So, it will not radiate along the theta equal to 90 degrees or at theta equal to 0, but rather it radiates at a maximum radiation actually will be at a different angle. And you will also see that there would be additional lobes, actually this should be of equal length. So, please forgive that. You will see that there would be many, many lobes. So, this or rather at least you will see in this case that there are 6 lobes. This can be thought of as the main lobe and this would be a side lobe, this would again be an additional main lobe and so on. So, you will actually see that there are multiple main lobes or lobes which are at different angles. Of course, the radiation is still equal to 0 along the axis of the dipole and it is maximum along the 90 degrees, but it is also maximum and in fact larger along some other angles. Okay. So, these patterns actually demonstrate that the nulls actually definitely occur at theta equal to 0 and it would be maximum at 90 degrees. Although, when the length of the antenna becomes larger, additional lobes start to appear. One final point before we move on to other matters of business is to actually look at the radiated power for a half wave dipole, okay, because that is the most important type of antenna that will be used. So, we will evaluate the radiated power and the radiated power does not really require me to calculate what is the magnetic field. Okay. So, I avoid calculating the magnetic field by only writing the corresponding uh, power density from the theta component of the electric field okay, and then integrate this power density over the solid angle which would be r square sin theta d theta d phi. Theta goes from 0 to pi whereas phi goes from 0 to 2 pi but luckily e theta is completely independent of phi. So, one integration drops out. So, it would be 2 pi integral 0 to pi e of theta square divided by 2 eta 0. Okay. Of course, r square sin theta d theta also exists. Now, from our expressions, we know that e theta would be some j eta 0 i 0 by 2 pi r and because this is a half wave dipole, there would not be sin of k 0 d term here you have an e power minus j k r and also because it is a half wave dipole uh, cos k 0 d term will also go away and you get cos pi by 2 cos theta divided by sin theta. right? So, this was e theta when you take the magnitude of this one and then take the square root of it or square of it this term goes away because the magnitude of e power minus j k r is 1 the magnitude of j is 1 that will also go away and whatever that you get is some constant out here some eta 0 i 0 by 2 pi r constant which of course will because everything is real it will simply increase out there. So, this becomes 2 pi whole square r square okay. and then you have cos square pi by 2 cos theta divided by sin square theta multiplying by r square sin square theta d theta and then multiplying by 2 pi integrating over the entire values of theta. So, you see that r square r square stands to cancel 1 2 pi cancels with the other 2 pi okay, and 1 of the sin theta term cancels with the other sin theta term. Okay. It turns out that even after cancelling and removing all these terms, okay, so I am going to erase it right here, but please 
uh, you should not do it here okay so you should be careful when you write these expressions so this would be sin theta right and this would be cos square pi by 2 cos theta d theta in the general case of course you have to include all that other terms that we have not included in terms of k0 and d okay again as i said this particular integral is actually very difficult to evaluate and one normally utilizes numerical techniques or the tabulated values and from the tabulated values it can be shown that for a lambda by 2 antenna the integral turns out to be some number which would be all the other things that the integral will turn out to be a number that is given by 36.57 and because there is a current of course which is know there the total radiated power is again directly proportional to i square but this time it is 36.57 okay you can also show that for a half wave dipole what will happen to the maximum value of the uh, power density the maximum value of the power density will be obtained when you consider f of theta at theta equal to 90 degrees or of course this would be proportional to f of theta at 90 degrees and you can actually go back to this expression so this is the power density so you can evaluate this power density at theta equal to 90 degrees for which this cos pi by 2 cos theta by sin pi by 2 term will go away and that would be the maximum value of the power density and then you can find out directivity as the maximum power density divided by we just calculated the radiated power which was 36.57 i0 square divide this one by 4 pi r square okay and when you calculate it you will get 1.64 which is slightly greater than 1.5 for a elementary dipole but what is important thing that has happened over here is that although the directivity has not really increased okay directivity has not really increased what has really happened is that the radiation resistance which can be obtained by going to 36.57 i0 square and then writing this as half i0 square rr remember this was the equivalent resistance that the antenna sees so this rr will now be about 73 ohms so this is actually a larger value which actually improves the amount of power that is actually coupled so the efficiency of the antenna is actually improved incidentally we haven't discussed what is efficiency efficiency of an antenna is simply how much power is being radiated to how much power is actually input to the system the power input to the antenna would of course come from the power source or the voltage source whereas the power radiated would be what is the fraction of the power that has been radiated okay at this point it would also be very nice to mention that an antenna is a reciprocal device that is an antenna that is used as a transmitter will have a certain directivity and the gain of directivity pattern but the same antenna can also be used as a receiving antenna so these antennas are reciprocal devices okay we in fact code this reciprocal devices in a very interesting formula called as freeze equation which is used to obtain link budgets or to set this link budget in any antenna kind of a communication so the basic idea here is that you start off with two antennas okay if they are identical antennas then their patterns would also be identical but you don't really have to assume identical antennas to begin with and let's say these antennas are separated by a distance of r so you can actually see that when you are standing on the receiving antenna there would be some amount of power density that would be coming in and that power density would actually of course be the amount of power that is being radiated by the first antenna okay so the power density would be p radiation 1 that is antenna radiated power times r square of course this is the power density so you need to multiply this uh, you know power density with the directivity or rather this is the power density including the directivity i am not assuming that this is an isotropic antenna i am assuming that this antenna is a non isotropic antenna therefore the total power density that we obtain would actually be given by this particular quantity what would be the power that would actually be received by the second antenna well it has to be whatever the power density that would exist right times what is called as the aperture or the capture area right so aperture or the capture area of the antenna so you can think of this aperture as you know initially as a physical aperture but you will see that most antennas do not have the same as physical aperture most of them actually have a smaller uh, 
uh, effective aperture compared to the physical aperture. The physical aperture is just a very simple concept. So, suppose this would be the antenna that would be receiving and you come in with a uniform you know power density out there and then this antenna is completely immersed in this uniform power density. So, this would correspond to the effective power, but it turns out that or effective aperture or the capturing area, but it turns out that in many cases that would not be completely possible. So, the effective power that is being received okay, and the power density that exists at the uh, receiving terminals to the power that is actually intercepted actually the power that is received is called as the effective aperture of the antenna and it is denoted by A effective. Okay. So, the received power actually corresponds to whatever the power density that would exist times the aperture itself. Okay. So, if I call the aperture of the second antenna as A2, okay, for a moment I am dropping off E effective, but if I just call this aperture or the effective aperture as A2, then the received power by the second antenna is given by the power density that exists at the input terminals which is P radiation 1 D1 divided by 4 pi R square times A2. Now, of course, if you reverse the roles of the transmitting and receiving antenna and instead send in a certain amount of power from the second antenna with a directivity D2, then the received power for the first antenna would then depend on the effective aperture of the first antenna itself. right? Now, in a reciprocal antenna, the fraction of the power that is received when one is radiating okay, must be equal to the fraction of the power that is received by the first antenna all other things being equal the fraction of the power that is received by the first antenna when the second antenna is radiating. Okay. So, P received 2 by P radiation 1 must be equal to P received 1 by P radiation 2. This means D1 A2 will also be equal to D2 A1 and the ratio of D1 to A1 would of course, be equal to the ratio of D2 to A2. It also turns out that the relationship between the effective aperture and the directivity can be written as lambda square d divided by 4 pi. We have not developed this. You can look at the textbook for a more detailed version of what this equation is, but aperture is proportional to d. It, the proportionality constant is given by lambda square by 4 pi and of course, it is independent of whether you have actually kept any other uh, this one or not. So, of course, the aperture is also independent of a second antenna. Therefore, A is given by lambda square d by 4 pi. What we will do is we will we have actually kind of come to just one or two steps from phrase equation which we will take up in the next module. For now, we will stop at this point. Thank you very much.